Hi everyone, hope you all are doing well. I'm here today to talk to you about Viking Therapeutics, ticker VKTX, and why I believe it is one of the, if not the, most undervalued biotech asset within the entire space. So for those of you that don't know the Viking uh, story, it's pretty straightforward. They've got a GLP-1 that is an injectable and about to start their phase three any day now. The company is, is pointed to a second quarter start date for that. They have a phase two oral GLP-1 that has been fully enrolled and uh, we should expect that. I would guess at AASLD in November of this year. Of course, data could come before that, but if the company were to make a splash, that is the place they would do it. In addition to a mid-stage uh, THR beta agonist, which we'll talk briefly about, but not spend much time because it is the GLP-1s, the Ozempic and Monjuros, the Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk is that everybody really cares about. So today, 17th of April, 2025, Eli Lilly released data for Orphoglipron, a phase three oral. And in that data, they showed that the highest dose given after 40 weeks, 40 weeks, uh, had an 8% weight loss, 7.99%. I might do a little rounding had an 8% weight loss and the market ascribed to it 15% jump. That is $90 billion. I repeat, the market said this is worth $90 billion. Viking Therapeutics arguably has the best GLP-1 in the space, but it's still in clinical development. So we've seen that in their phase two trial for the injectable, um, the data was outstanding and helped take the stock from 25 and some change about a year ago up to what, $95 over the course of a few days. So clearly the market saw a lot of value in that. In that year, Viking has completely retraced and round tripped its own bags, so to speak, um, on what I would argue is no negative news. If anything, everything has been uh, pretty outstanding and positive. Pfizer has kicked out the door. It's oral because of liver tox issues. Um, Eli Lilly's Orpho is okay. And in, in, um, Vikings data, we saw that it essentially is equating to about 1% weight loss per week on the highest dose, give or take a smidge. This is insane. This is insane because Vikings valuation at the end of today is only about 2.65 billion. You take away the $900 million that they have in cash and you're saying that the market is ascribing a value of only about 1.75 billion for their GLP-1 and THR beta? This is silliness. This is absurdity. So at this point, I envision one of two things. One, they get sucked up by somebody. If I were to take a stab, I'm going to throw my hat in for Pfizer or for AbbVie as a potential acquirer. That's route one. Route two is they go at this alone. So they have 900 million in cash and they have just announced a couple of weeks ago a manufacturing agreement. So it is evident that they will be able to produce their product. They would have to build out a commercial organization, which analysts might think like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so hard. But in reality, are you kidding me? They're just gonna poach. They would poach from Novo and they poach from Pfizer, um, excuse me, Eli, and let me tell you how that works. Hi, I'm Viking, and I'm looking for a new, you know, chief commercial officer. Oh, hey, wait, you've been running Novos for the last five years or 15 years or whatever as a, you know, senior manager or 
whatever, however they go about it, I don't think it'll be very difficult to hire from folks that are already in the GLP-1 space, working at Eli Lilly and working at Novo Nordisk who have those established relationships. Let's go back to the buyout option. Pfizer needs something. Uh, their COVID vaccine is obviously done. Um, the revenue from it is not high. And AbbVie needs something. Humira is going off patent, if it hasn't already. Um, and they just need the, the, the cash flow. So it'll effectively a 1.65 billion valuation with data coming by the end of the year in their phase two, um, as well as data next year, almost certainly for the phase three. I don't see how this isn't at least a seven to $10 billion buyout target. Minimum, like minimum. I, I just, guys, you throw on the THR beta agonist for metabolic associated stadiohepatitis or MASH, fatty liver disease. It used to be NASH, name changes, whatever. And that's another five billion. I mean, I'm I'm throwing out numbers, just just plug and plays here. Um, who is it? Sorry, having a brain fart for a second. Magical. Magical Pharmaceuticals has the only approved drug for MASH in the space, Resdifra. And Magical has an assigned value by the market of, what, six and a half, seven and a half billion dollars? Vikings drug is significantly better. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. I believe, but you need to do your own research, that Vikings drug is significantly better than Madrigal's. Again, Madrigal's is being sold, and so they're able to get money, and Vikings is only a pipeline. But from what we see in the data, it is a game changer for the space. Viking has said publicly that they're looking to partner that because the FDA is requiring liver biopsies for the next trial and resources, etc., might be constraining. And I think that Vike is making the right play by just focusing on their GLP-1. But if we just go through the numbers, guys, the, the valuation currently given to Viking is completely insane. So what I encourage you to do is check out their corporate profile and just revalidate everything I've already given you, especially when you compare it across a competitive landscape. And it is compared to the competitive landscape that things become very, very interesting. If we legitimately take what analysts are saying that the GLP-1 space is going to be a $70 billion a year industry within the next 10 years, Viking taking the smallest percentage of that, because right now, let's be clear, it's only Novo Nordisk and it's only Eli Lilly controlling the market. Viking is has a clear path and direct path to be number three in the space. And the hundreds of billions of dollars that the stock market is assigning to Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk for the GLP-1 programs is absurd in relation to what Viking has coming down the pipeline. I think the data alone speaks for itself. And I just want everyone to check it out. I, for one, should clarify, I do own Viking. And... I'm on the brink of mortgaging my house for more. That doesn't mean you should do your own research, uh, but should be fun. Should be fun to see what happens. Uh, anyone with a strong bear case against Viking, please reach out because I'd be very curious to hear it. I have one friend who shall not be named, <clears throat> and you know who you are, uh, who's not a fan of Viking, but I think that his his layout is totally incorrect and his analysis is entirely wrong. Again, you know who you are, so I'm speaking to you directly, which is that within 10 years, the GLP-1 space will just be like buying aspirin. 
I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that there are people who will still want to lose weight. I think there are people who will need to lose weight. And the faster and more powerful your drug is to help those reach those goals, the better everyone will be. The last little plug I have on Viking, which I think is tremendous, is that if you've taken Ozempic or Manjuro, which I haven't, and there's nothing wrong if you have, but if you have, you'll notice that the side effects, the GI side effects are super intense and they are on a consistent basis. What the company has reported, what clinical trial providers have reported is that with Vikings 2735, their GLP-1, the side effects really only last for about a week. So to me, that is huge market differentiation that will come out in wonderful ways uh, once the drug is sold and, and marketed. When will that be? Well, the phase three, the company hasn't announced it, but let's assume it's a 13 week trial. They're gonna enroll in a day. I mean, not really, but let's be honest, they will enroll that in the snap of a finger. And then 13 weeks, so they'll have that data by second half of the latest next year, Real, realistically, probably May of 2026, is my guess. I'm Again, I'm, I'm spitballing here. But timelines, I mean, you can pencil this all out on your own. Um, and they'll have to go through approval. So you assume it hits the market by 2027. And if they go at it alone, and like I said, the market ascribed 90 billion to, to um, Eli today on their phase three. I mean, come on. They go at it alone. They've got the cash that they have. They're gonna build the sales force. This is gonna be a, a juggernaut. It's at least at that point, 30 to $50 billion valuation. And again, you guys, today, the 17th of April, 2025, we are only sitting at 2.65. And again, you take away the 900 million in cash and this thing is, is a jogger not waiting for happen. Sounds like my neighbor's about to start some work. Don't want that lawnmower interfering with this video. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and whatever else you're supposed to do on YouTube. Peace.